This quivering thing in my hand is known as a door. A door is the gateway to a soul. It is a entrance to another realm. It is a window into another... Sometimes it's just a door. I made this earlier today, and I'm just going to show you a quick little crafting video. I think the point of this is to maybe indicate to you that you can get started in your crafting journey, basically trying to pretend you're making your own little dwarven 4G type stuff at home for on the cheap, really. You can get some simple materials. I'll break it down and show you the materials I've used for this. Why a door? What's the significance? What's the point? Well, I don't know. Maybe you can just spice up your table a little bit. And I think dabbling into this might be the first little foray. That's a good word. And journey into creating some awesome bits to enhance your table. Let's see what's what. You're going to need your equipment, your tools first. So here's just two different size popsicle sticks or tongue depressors. And I've got a pair of shears here that I use to cut those popsicle sticks apart. I have a knife. Very simple. Nothing too complicated here. Nothing crazy going on. Of course, you need your glue stick because I'm going to be gluing some stuff together. I'm using this black cherry paint. I don't know why I chose that, but I just knew I wanted a darker color and a lighter color to go over the top. I have this wire brush, which I used to kind of just basically make a mess with and maybe burr in some details and some wood grain. If you want a little more precision cutting, of course, you can use a knife like that, but I don't like to. And then, of course, you've got to apply the paint in some fashion. So I'm going to just use a simple paintbrush here to put that on. This here is just a piece of sort of packaging plastic. If you've bought anything from Amazon, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, whatever, you're probably going to have just a bunch of loose packages, you know, something that your headphones came in. I decided to go with an old Reaper Bones package, and you'll see what I'll use that for in a little bit here. So you also need a cutting mat. It's very important when you're kind of cutting into some details. Don't mess up your battle mat, your table, all this other stuff. So here we go, using this guy. The reason why I have the rounded edge or tongue depressors is because the top of it already forms the top of the door. I will typically make my doors about an inch and a half. So that's what I'm doing here is I'm just cutting it up and getting that single piece. If you need an extra thickness or kind of have a little more sturdiness to your door, you could always make two of these and then just glue them back to back so that they're a little thicker. This part is not really necessary. What I'm doing here is I'm just kind of cleaning up the edges a little bit, making a little more flush, and just ensuring that my door is kind of standing upright and not tilted or anything like that. So just make sure that, you know, your cut is nice and straight. That's what the door is going to look like before I start digging into it. Coming up here, I'm just using that knife. Like I said, I want to use the knife. I don't want to use my X-Acto because you're just going to really chew at your blade. And all I'm doing is I'm basically just, and be very careful, of course, I'm just kind of etching in some wood grain lines, you know, and just getting some texture to it. These are the type of things that the paint is going to pick up so that you have those differences in color and texture. So now I'm just, as I said before, I'm using the wire brush to kind of clean up some of these loose shavings, but I'm also just making a massive mess. Now I grab the smaller sticks. You can use any sort of sticks you want, and I'm just creating some wood planks just to create a little more visual appeal to the door and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue these on I only put them on one side and that's just so simply I can indicate kind of what's the front of the door and what's the back of the door and that's roughly what the door is going to look like before I start getting into painting it here's that black cherry color that I'm going to that I'm going to use to paint over the top of this here I don't know why I chose that I don't like this reddish thing but whatever maybe there's a reason why the door has that reddish color Mostly what you're really looking for is just creating some contrast by having a darker color as sort of your base coat and then a lighter color that I can kind of dry brush over the top. What's going on here is you are literally watching paint dry right now. So there's the dry brush. Whenever you're dry brushing, you want to try and take up as much of the paint as possible, get rid of it, and then just brush very lightly over the top and it's going to pick up the edges that are, you know, the recess stuff is going to keep the darker colors and whatnot. So now... This part, this is just my own thing. 
I didn't like the color. I didn't like the way it looked out or ended up looking with all the wood grain. So I kind of just grabbed a Sharpie and I'm just painting over the top or drawing over the top really and just sort of creating my own wood look. You can do whatever you want there. Remember that plastic I showed you from the uh, my miniature? I just cut out a little square. And then what you do is you just hot glue that and hold it onto the top for about 30 seconds until it sticks and it will stand up quite well. The beauty in this is, yes, the door looks wonderful if I was to show you what it looks like on some terrain, right? It looks like it fits, but the cool thing is because I used that plastic, look how cool this looks. Not only does it stand up, but it doesn't take away from any of the texture and the cool bits underneath it. So it really allows that stuff to shine through. Of course, you can always show your door in this way, but I believe if you make your little doors and begin your crafting process through doors, you can make it look quite a bit better. And now I'm going to show you the vantage point from the PCs as they walk into the room. That's it, folks. Thanks, everyone, for watching, and take care.